I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. They're now trying to say, hey, we've got a really clever idea for the cost of living crisis. Right. Eat cereal for dinner. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist well, did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to it was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next half hour to skid through the morning stories like a drunk on a kebab wrapper trying to flag a taxi. You're with Talk TV, on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Was that what you were doing last night? Is that what <laughs> I it is? wish. I went to bed at about 10 o'clock and just sort of like, Oh, no, know, no, that was me. Kicking uh, my sheets around. Drunk and getting a dollar and getting a taxi. Was it? That, that must have been me, yeah. So well, this, this is why you came in this morning and like, I'm in physical I, pain. Yeah, well, I am in physical pain, but it's not to do with drinking. Uh, I've got a cold, everyone. No, I gave it to him. Uh, okay, but no yeah. panic. Uh, sure no no need to uh, feel too sorry for me, but I'm sure you don't. Uh, no one does. Anyway, uh, we've got lots to get through. As always, uh, we will, of course, be coming to the latest Kate drama in just a minute, but I thought we might sort of kick off with something that might affect all our lives a bit more. Uh, Britain is heading for the polls in October. Uh, Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, dropped the biggest hint yesterday, as many of us are predicting, that uh, the general election is likely to be in late October. What do you think? Well, of course it's likely to be in late October. I think everyone's right. known this all along inside politics, and it's just general straw man making and headline nonsense mm -hmm. trying to suggest it's going to be any earlier. It's not going to be in May. We know that now. Poll cards have gone out. It's not going to therefore be a month after May or two months after May. That would just be ludicrous. Yes. It's not going to be November because that clashes with the American elections. It's not going to be December because that's Christmas. So, you know, that kind of leaves us with just October, doesn't it? And I think what they're hoping is essentially they're going going to be able to present a more cheerful economic picture and claim credits for it. Well, I've got some news for you, yeah. Mr Hunt. Um, all of these things that are happening regarding inflation, that's to do with the outside world, not really you. And it only takes a little bit of uh, malefations from some of our enemies, uh, like closing down cargo in the Red Sea, like messing about with energy prices in OPEC, to just make it all get horribly wrong again. Yeah. So I wouldn't count your chickens before they're hatched. But they will, of course, take credit for the economic up to tick, as you quite rightly say, it's not really much to do with this government, but uh, they'll reap the benefits and say it was all down to their brilliance. Uh, let's have a little listen to uh, Jeremy Hunt uh, talking to the Lord's Economic Affairs Committee yesterday uh, and being allegedly indiscreet. This is Jeremy Hunt being indiscreet. Oh. And what this shows is that the plan to bring inflation down, it was over 11% when Rishi Sunak became Prime Minister, uh, now just 3.4%. That plan is working, but we do need to stick to it and see it right the way through. Where are they interviewing him? Castle Dracula? This sort of strange uplit shot lit, like by some sort of mysterious bookcase there. Yeah, I, th I don't know. There's... Uh... I mean, they, 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 it's interesting where po politicians always sort of uh, choose to be before uh, something in the background. That's uh, Jeremy Hunt trying to look uh, intellectual. I like uh, my favourite is when they sit in front of huge machinery, you know, I know you masculine that. What's in the background today? Yeah. and bulldozers and things like this while wearing hard hats. My, my favourite is when they go to some sort of like food preparation area and have to wear the little sort of net hats like a yeah. catering lady. That pleases yeah. me enormously. And by the way, here's a massive vote of confidence for. Rishi Sunak, the Tories, 45% uh, of Conservative voters agree the Prime Minister should be the leader uh, going into the wow, election. Wow, that's almost half. 40... <laughs> 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 what a vote of confidence. Rishi oh. must be... Thrilled I with know, that. That's so brilliant. 37% don't want him. Uh, I think the only reason that the Tories aren't dumping him, if they had another two years, oh, they would they're do dumping it. like a They'd hot coal. It. They love dumping him. But they're, not, but they're not dumping him because even they, in their ludicrous uselessness, realise that to drop him now 
would just be suicide. It would just well, make them look you say absolutely this. dysfunctional. You say this, dear Kevin, yeah. uh, because, of course, we know that, but there's still all these movements and plots and factions going on yeah. behind closed doors. And the name that was sort of flagged up a lot last week was Penny Mordance, who stayed very silent on the subject, apart from flogging that dress she wore at the coronation. Um, and now there's a new name that's being bandied yep. about as the person yep. who could take over in some sort of coup from Mishi Sunak and lead them into the election. And that is one Tom Tugendhat. Now, uh, just to uh, no, full disclosure, I really like Tom. Tom's a mate of mine. He came to my 40th birthday party. What a brilliant man he is. And actually, if he did become leader of the Tories, I think that would be a great idea because he's a genius with geopolitics. And we live in an age where, yeah, well, frankly, sure. We should have no truck with China, Russia and the lot of it. Uh, but, they, like you said, they just can't keep changing the person at the top and think the general public are like, oh, yeah, this time, that that's right, it, yeah. It just make them look ridiculously wanted. dysfunctional. By the way, I was at your 40th birthday you party. Did I didn't see, I didn't speak to Tom. You, I didn't even know he was there. He was there. Oh, well, now you tell me. Uh, but anyway, yeah, a good guy, and uh, I hope uh, he gets the gig in the end, but I don't He's think they'll man. be changing great until man, after Tubes. the election, when, trust me, he, Tom will, if he gets the gig, be the leader of the opposition. He won't be the Prime Minister, I'm afraid, because Rishi and his gang have screwed it up in spades, and there's no repairing the damage of this useless government. Uh, now, uh, it is time now to move on to Kate, and actually, there is a very serious story today, yeah. uh, that uh, while she was in the London clinic uh, undergoing serious abdominal surgery. Uh, it is said that a member of staff there tried to uh, get hold of her private medical records, presumably to sell them to the media. Now, I don't know uh, if any publications around the world would ever buy that information, but I'll tell you right now, no newspaper or magazine or media outlet in Britain would touch that with a barge bowl. Well, someone would somewhere, I'm pretty sure. The French or the Spanish, because they seem to have very few And the Americans, uh, the, the, the Inquirer might but be interested. This, yeah. this is really, really terrible. I mean, when you go into a hospital, the first thing you expect, whoever you are, you know, a member of the royal family or Joe Bloggs, is absolute confidentiality mm. with your extremely sensitive medical records. But the world has gone absolutely tonto. I mean, disclaimer, the world has always been tonto <laughs> when it comes to who shot JFK. Yeah, you're right about that. And, you know, Marilyn Monroe's death. We've always done this. We've always loved a conspiracy theory and nosing about in the private lives of uh, public figures. But since social media, it's just out of control. And I think a lot of people out there need to have a reality check and maybe just log off for a while, right? Get your mental balance That's back to idea. where it should be. Turn off the socials. I don't know, do some gardening or something. Spring is here. Get some fresh air. Go outside and play, as my mum would say, and stop being weirdos online. Yeah, uh, uh, social media, just to have it in the background. Uh, I, when Twitter was at its height, I don't know, 10 years ago, I was like lots of people. I, I felt I had to tweet yeah. like every uh, three minutes. You know, I had to be involved. Mm. I look at Twitter now about once every three hours. Uh, I just do a retweet. Uh, uh, and retweet a few things and you know, mm. say when we we're going to be on air, and that's about it. Yeah. If you cut social media mainly out of your life, you'll be a happier it's person. It's so nice. I remember the day I left Facebook, and it was like a sort of moment of joy. <laughs> I mean, my Facebook account had actually been hacked, and someone had put all sorts of horrible things on there. And they got in touch <laughs> with me and said, this breaches our guidelines. We're going to close down your account. And I found myself going, good. Hey, Go good. On, yeah, go, go ahead. Not your fault, I but don't get, good. I don't need to speak to Joanne, who I went to school with in 1987. Who cares how many kids she's got now? I don't. No, nor do I. Uh, but I hope Joanne's all right. Uh, uh, all but right uh, bosses, uh, bosses of the London clinic, uh, clinic contacted Kensington Palace. Uh, the police, uh, I don't believe, are investigating because in the end, nothing was stolen. This was an attempt to steal her medical records that didn't work out, uh, although that is a criminal offence, of course. Uh, now, uh, just to, as a a historical note, uh, when Kate was pregnant in 2012, uh, she had another sort of hospital drama. Uh, a DJ from uh, Sydney's two-day FM radio oh, station phoned the hospital. She was in the King Edward VII Hospital in London, pregnant, and pretended to be the Queen and uh, then Prince Charles, uh, and uh, was put through, they got away with it, were put through to a nurse who started telling them all about how Kate was. And, uh, of course, it was for, it was a, a fake, and uh, this caused a hell of a storm. Mm. And the poor nurse who got conned by these DJs, uh, she subsequently killed herself. She committed yeah. suicide. So, uh, yeah, you know, poor strange. old Kate, every time she goes into hospital, something awful like this happens. Uh, but I just want to put a message, message out to the public. You know, I'm a veteran member of the media. Don't steal people's medical records because we won't buy them. You're wasting your time. 
Uh, we don't encourage breaking the law. We don't encourage uh, that kind of intrusion into someone's privacy. You know, mm. you don't want to know every single detail. You know where I stand. No, I, I want to know a bit stand. more detail. <laughs> but I do not want to know the medical details. That's not my right to know that. And this was very wrong. I hope they get to the bottom of who did it and they get sacked at the very least. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, conspiracy theories go for oh, worse. They you know, turn on so and she, on, gets, they? she gets filmed. Uh, the son got hold of the footage of her going with William to a uh, farm shop in Windsor. And guess what? It's uh, kicked off a firestorm of people saying, that's a body double, that's <laughs> not her. It is her. What? It clearly like, is listen, her. What is wrong with the world? Social media is making people mentally ill. They are actually, I mean, it's turning the world bonkers. I increasingly get to the stage where I'm like, let's just pull out the plug. And the other thing is, what's actually going on yeah, here yeah. is you've got a lot of people behind the scenes from hostile regimes using massive bot farms to propel these conspiracy theories. What's in it for them, you say? Why would they do that? Well, do you know what? If all the West is distracted by whether Kate is actually in a coma and that's a body double, they're not looking at what Russia are doing. They're not looking at what Iran are doing. They're actually completely dropping the ball left, right and centre. And it also causes mass confusion, <laughs> mental illness, yeah. broken, divided societies, and all of our enemies are laughing they're at waste, us. They're wasting their time because uh, all Vladimir is achieving there is selling more newspapers for Western companies. So I hope, That's also he, hope he's pleased with that. Uh, he doesn't understand the West. Right, Kevin, just quickly, Kevin Peterson, the cricketer, the cricket Kevin. legend, lives uh, right next door to Kate and William, and he... Uh, said it's absolutely absurd, these ridiculous, I won't use the word he used, conspiracy theories about Kate Middleton, because he sees the Prince and the Princess of Wales every single day or very often in the local area, and they're happy, smiling, waving at him, etc., etc. So he says, don't believe a word of it. Our thanks uh, to uh, Kevin for that. That's a, a useful contribution to this ludicrous firestorm of debate. There's no conspiracy theory. She's getting better. Let's leave her alone. I'll, I'll, I'll go with you this, this yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Right, Just... let's uh, move on to the migrants. Uh, migrants, uh, while this uh, ludicrous ping-pong goes on between oh. the House of Lords and the uh, House of Commons about this Rwanda bill, the Rwanda safety bill, uh, guess what? The migrants are still coming across are. the channel in their droves because right. the, the calm spring weather has encouraged and dozens, dozens of them yeah, were this... saved yesterday right. by uh, border. Force. This it's is not ridiculous. going to stop at any point. We've got another big war breaking out now in Sudan, once again being stirred by Russia. Uh, because there are other forces, like there are with the Cape conspiracies, there are hostile foreign forces who are actually curating and choreographing and uh, massively inflating the migrant crisis. And so it's not going to stop unless the West actually wakes up and takes dis de decisive action. Um, but we've got, you know, the, the, the Rwanda amendments still being debated and voted in the Lords today, going backwards and forwards, while we sit on our hands and do absolutely nothing and allow essentially an act of war to be conducted against us. It's just absolutely pathetic. Yeah. And I think the very first European countries turn around and go, enough is enough, and turn a yeah. boat around. Everyone else will Just follow. Do something. Don't worry I about our reput reputation sword. on the international stage. No one cares about that. And uh, yes, uh, six or seven amendments. So, so here's, here's the deal. Uh, the House of Commons voted the Rwanda bill through. Uh, it went up to the Lords last week and they uh, put 10 amendments uh, into it, uh, completely changing the point of the law, uh, partly uh, saying that uh, it wasn't Parliament's right to say whether or not Rwanda was safe and therefore undermining the whole point of the bill. Uh, anyway, uh, it's, got, it's got now going back to, uh, to the Lords. Uh, uh, the Lords will put their amendments back in and then it will go back to the Commons and the Commons will kick them out once and for all. Uh, so welcome to Parliamentary Ping Pong. That is the mother of all parliaments, wasting oh. everyone's time while migrants while migrants continue to pour across the channel. That, That's the what? story, not these idiots in Westminster. And by the way, we must talk about oh, this, this is very what quick. I was going to say. Don't Rishi you worry, Sunak, I'll Rishi Sunak, home. we've left the EU, but he has come up with an alternative EU. Incredible. Uh, he's called a conference of European leaders, including da da. Emmanuel Macron uh, to, to, uh, at Blenheim Palace uh, to confront the migrant crisis and to, to talk about the scourge well, of people smuggling. No. We've left the EU, actually, no, uh, hold on, Rishi. Hold on, you say that, and I'm the first one to be banging a drum for blimmin' staying out of that horrible union. But when it comes to the migrant crisis, this is a European-wide problem. We do need to get world leaders together because we've all got to sit down and agree that it is not illegal, it is not wrong, and it is not immoral to stop them getting into Europe in the 
first place. And actually, little Napoleon, who I didn't used to like, I kind of enjoyed a cut of his jib these days. Oh, you like Napoleon? I was getting a bit yeah. hard line, and I'm like, great oh, guy, yeah, great look guy. Look at you suddenly yeah. getting it. Got a it. bad press, so, didn't he? You know, bad press. So no, he's suddenly <sighs> getting it. And do you know what? If Sunak can sort of, you know, get people like um, Maloney, who said she was going to use the Italian Navy to turn the boats around, yeah, well, he's won't. already doing it. Yeah. And uh, and, and people like it. Macron just sign up, saying this is a, a security risk. This is an international disaster for the integrity of the West. Let's turn boats around, and they do that, then this will be turn... a meeting worth calling. No, it's not. Just, turn the, it's just turn, turn the boats around and don't bother having this meeting. That's my theory. Sunak, again, faces a Tory revolt over plans to scrap short sentences. This is because our prisons are overcrowded and they want to sort of basically ditch all prison sentences of less than a year. Uh, it's very pragmatic. It's very un-Tory. And a load mm -hmm. of Tories, mm -hmm. guess what, saying, you can't do this. If you do this, we'll vote against you. So yet another unconservative pot. Uh, policy by our un-Tory Prime Minister uh, and the Tories that remain in that party, mainly on the back benches, are saying, no, you can't the do this. The problem we've got is that they always have to sort of chase the tail of the dog, don't they? They're never ahead of a situation. They're never planning in advance. We've got about, I don't know, 80 prison spaces left on an estate of about 80,000. It's something utterly ludicrous. 10,000 of our 80,000 prisoners are foreigners who shouldn't be, you know, being kept at His Majesty's pleasure. They should be sent back from whence they came, yep. but we don't have enough prison spaces, and yet all the time they're adding more and more and more crimes to the roster, which I don't disagree with, you know, get your bits out and send them to a 15-year-old girl, then do go to prison. But when you don't have prison spaces, where are you going to put them? Build more prisons, deport foreign prisoners right now. That is the solution, not just letting ne'er-do-wells out to sort of go commit more crimes. That's idiotic. Well, she said. Uh, now, uh, we all love living in the nanny state. Here's another reason that our Prime Minister is not a Conservative. He's a nanny statist. Uh, this ludicrous plan he's got to make smoking illegal for anyone born uh, after January uh, 2009, uh, but everyone born before that can smoke, uh, plus more plans uh, to uh, put more regulations on vapes. Now, look, smoking and vaping are not illegal. It is not conservative to attack people for uh, indulging in legal activities. If you don't want people to smoke, Rishi, make it have the guts to make it illegal. But you won't, because you want the 12 billion quid a year you get from duty on them, Also, how on earth would this law be enforced? Because one person can go buy a pack of cigarettes and come out of the shop and just offer a cigarette to their mate. It's stupid. What are we going to do? Throw them in prison with our non, you know, existent prison spaces, hand them little fines. I mean, they get fined for everything these days. It's like the ordinary person going about their life just trying to, I don't know, alleviate the pain of living in the 21st century, gets attacked, bombarded yeah. with fines, whether it's parking yeah. in a yellow box, having a cigarette. You know, you're the person who's constantly doing wrong while you've got kids yeah. with hoodies on and masks going around mugging people and no one does anything about that. Yeah, and uh, Honestly, he goes, today is Hi guys, ridiculous. this smoking bit is the right thing to do. The last person who said it was the right thing to do was the awful Queen of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, and the new government came <laughs> in and kicked, kicked it straight out of the statute, so it's ridiculous. Meanwhile, down in Wales, you know that bloke Kim Jong Drakeford, uh, Mark Drakeford, <laughs> the COVID uh, dictator, the I tyrant see. of COVID. Uh, Not well, many people do, though, do they? Let's I've be never fair. thought much of it. He's complete him. He completely ruined Wales. Uh, but <laughs> I've, I've, my opinion of him has gone up a bit because he addressed the Welsh Senate yesterday in his uh, farewell speech, and was so upset about how much he'd ruined Wales that he started crying. Let's have a look. And thanks to all of you in the chamber as well. For me personally, the last 12 months has been the hardest and the saddest of my life. And people will not see beyond the chamber those small acts of kindness that happen every day from people in every part of this chamber that help someone to get through those very, very difficult times.
I think it's worth pointing out that what he is talking about with the last 12 months being extremely difficult his for wife him with died, the death yeah. of his wife. So you can understand why he's stepping down. And it's, you know, nice to see a human side of him. I mean, his wife of 46 years, Claire, died suddenly aged 71. And actually, you know, credits him, whether you like his politics or not. <laughs> I hate his politics. No, but whether you... Well, I don't particularly like them either. I hate But you them. like his politics or not, he, you know, picked himself up, went into work and did his, you know, duty, if you will, for a whole year after that. So yeah. that's shows some degree of resilience and backbone. So I do give him yeah, Of course, it's very sympathy but, for his wife dying, but I will never forgive that. But, I mean, the problem Wales has got, which is the problem Him, Scotland's he's been got. the problem. Well, Drakeford. No, yeah, but, but both Wales and Scotland have this problem, which is they've ended up as sort of left-wing one-party states yeah. where they always feel they have to do something different from, the, uh, from England because of devolution to, you know, justify them no longer just being sort of two-bit local councillors and sort of having these positions and parliament buildings. And so they just bring in more more and more mad red tape and legislation and turn their little fiefdoms into, you know, yeah. communist empires. But, you know, other than that. Yeah. And uh, you still can't drive faster than 20 miles an hour in <laughs> all of Wales. Uh, they've stopped building roads because uh, Mark Drakeford thinks that's bad for the environment. And his behaviour during the COVID crisis was a absolutely was unforgivable, what you did to the poor people of Wales. So I'm very sorry your wife died, but get out of there. I don't want to ever see you again. He was C Comrade Corbyn's big crony. Well, I know. Big surprise. Now, uh, here, here's a, a legal milestone for you. Uh, an Arsenal fan, 39 years old, uh, Nicholas Hawkes is his name, has become the first person to be convicted of the new offence of cyber flashing. He sent pictures of his private parts to a woman and to a 15-year-old girl, so there's a paedophile uh, yeah. aspect to this. He was already a convicted sex offender. Now he is a convicted cyber flasher. Yeah. There's a new law. Now, I think it's good that he's been done. I'm not sure, do we need this cyber flashing yes. law? Yes, and I will tell you why. Because actually, why? when I like you, the way why, you Nice because Why? the court heard Hawke's offending has been exclusively sexual in nature and started after he was kidnapped, stabbed and held at £5,000 ransom demanded from his father. He's a messed up individual, right? Oh, of course, But the yeah, problem yeah, with yeah. these people is, you know how old Wayne Cousins started out? He started out as a flasher, didn't he? They all do. Well, yeah, but it's still, it was against the law. It was already against the law to send your pictures of your bits to women or the was other it? way no, around. Wasn't. Yes, they've just yes, made it that was. against yes, the law. It was. But they yes, it was. But the problem it was. Is, actually, the problem with the law is if you've done it, if you've sent yeah. your stuff to a teenager or whatever, yeah. or anybody, you can say, oh, but I thought that was consensual, they wanted it, and you've got, an, and I didn't mean it to cause psychological harm. If you say that, then you're not guilty. So yeah. this is problematic in terms of how this law is actually going to be enacted. Yeah. But, you know, as a woman, you, we don't want to see it, OK? We don't want it. It is intimidating. It is gross. It does put you off your blimming cornflakes. Um, but corn also, like I said, this is like, you know, little kids torture kittens, end up murderers. Yeah, yeah. Many start getting their junk out and flashing it about the place, usually end up rapists. And that's just a fact. Yeah, I just, I'm just saying, I'm out, of so course, you. this guy's got 66 weeks in jail. He fully deserves it. And of course, uh, you know, he deserved to feel the full force of the law. Just I'm not sure we actually needed this law. It was already against the law to do it. But uh, well, that's probably a minor point. He's behind bars and that's what he deserves. And uh, I do agree with you that the full force of the law must be heaped on the people who do this kind of thing. It's awful. No, right, this is dreadful. This yeah, is dreadful. It's a favourite person for you to phone up. Yeah, it's yeah, going on holiday yeah, for the six months. The tax man, uh, who is not my favourite person. No, right. and tax with women. HMRC. And ta HMRC has closed its tax helpline for six months, as, as of today, throughout the summer, to allow 100 customer service staff to work from home throughout the summer. Not just Isn't that, that special? And work a three-day week. What is going on? We already know that there's some sort of VIP tax line for MPs and stuff like that. But everyone else, if you, you're like, oh, I think I've overpaid tax. Can I have it back, please? Um, or I'm struggling to understand what these 5,386 pages of nonsense mean for me and how much tax I'm supposed to pay, who I pay it to, what sort of tax relief I can get, all the rest of it. Um, but you know, it's already in a massive mess. So I know, let's go woke and allow them to work from home with people's private information. And then maybe just not even work at all. What is wrong with the civil service? You're lazy, you're feckless, you're irresponsible, you're not doing us any good, we're paying for you. Get back behind your desks, I've had enough.
Well done. Yeah, very good. And HMRC, you, they're why not my favourite people. HMRC? You could give me two yeah. and a half grand back because yeah. I'm pretty sure you owe that to me. Yeah. Boneheads. And, and I know that the tax department isn't short of money because of the amount of money I have had yeah, to give them this year. Yeah, it's pretty much 50% <laughs> of the Cape country's GDP <laughs> yeah. right now. I'm also completely broke, thanks to the tax man. Uh, but tax at least I won't be able to speak to them anymore. Uh, they probably wouldn't want to speak to me. I might have some <laughs> maybe, choice maybe words for like, them. Maybe that's why they've all the three-day weeks because they've had you on the blower. They've yeah, all like, yeah. got PTSD. Uh, and pensioners, of course. Uh, be particularly harrowing for them, but they should keep at least some kind of helpline open. People working full time, like that. the good old days. Yeah. How about a five day week, eh? In and offices. you can't work from home. Right. Unless uh, you watch this show. Remember right, that. That's uh, always uh, my caveat. Okay, uh, uh, clean exit the ready, please. Uh, this is the very, it's last night on the BBC, the very final. Uh, Harry Biker's uh, episode, uh, which was filmed when Dave Myers was very, very sick uh, and Cy King throughout uh, was uh, struggling to hold on to, uh, hold on to himself really because uh, it was very, very emotional. And uh, Dave, uh, they're eating food, and Dave could barely eat it. You could tell that. And at one point, Cy turned to the camera and said. You know, the th this this guy, uh, it's just phenomenal that he's here to do this. Because at this point, when they filmed it, he he was extremely sick. Mm. But he dragged himself off, it, off what, frankly, was his deathbed to make this very last episode. And, uh, you know, they're a lovely couple. I've met them a few times. L nice couple. Of, what you saw is what you got. A couple of Geordies who love their food, love their bikes. Nice guys, down to earth. And, uh, you know, sometimes... Uh, all, all the all the good guys. Really I think I think we've got some uh, uh, footage from last night's episode. What could be better, mate? Nothing. Go west. Life is peaceful there. The west really will be a trip to remember. <laughs> hey, it's been amazing. It has, bro. It has. It has. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you too. They had a genuine, real friendship. And I that's think a bit that's upsetting, so wasn't it? Well, not because like, we hate each other. That last scene was a bit upsetting, wasn't it? That's Don't. Not... I, I feel emotional oh my today God. anyway. I'm all, like, funny at the moment. And I thought I was going to actually blub at that. I almost blubbed at Mark Graves. I think I did a bit. I think I did, did a bit. You? Did you see that? I mean, that, they just... Sort of, but they knew... Yeah, well, you know. Oh, do you think we should end the show like that and see if people at home blub? They won't, be they won't <laughs> believe me. But, I mean... It's so cuddly. Well, that final scene, embracing, because they must have known that was the end. Uh, very, very emotional, uh, and uh, those guys did great programs. By the way, I got one of their cookbooks. They were great recipes yeah, yeah. as well. Very difficult. You like a spot of cooking, yeah. don't you? Yes, a lot. Yes, I do. I do like to cook. A lot of their recipes, you know, you, they've got this sort of image of a couple of bikers who chucked a fried mm -hmm. egg in and some bacon and stuff. A lot of their recipes are very sophisticated and quite difficult to make. Do you know but... what I use as my main cookbook? Go on. La Russe Gastronomique. <laughs> It's true. I'm a big fan of fancy French cooking and I've got my kitchen is full of every type of device you can imagine. Oh, yeah. And who wrote, La Rue's, gastronomy? Who wrote La Rue's Gastronomique? Well, it's a compilation. It's is it? Just published, uh, okay. It sort of starts with Escoffier's recipes, if you will. Anyway, that's a bit of a random segue. Remind them what they've got to do at one o'clock, Kev. Uh, they've got to watch... Cross talk. Cross talk. We'll come to the end of the show for now. Thank you for tuning in. Please do join us later for Cross Talk at one o'clock. Up next is Julia Hartley Burrow, RIP Dave Myers. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kingston City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know.
What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh. Ooh. It's carry on what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> there was a suggestion by some that 